Thank you. Th sir. Thank you for your kind introduction, and thank you for including me in this very, very important and pertinent topic. And uh, after the talk, uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll stay around here. Uh, I am at the forefront of the anti-VGF uh, revolution. I consider myself a soldier, and I have been through all that, and I can sh uh, share with you what we do. So, in, uh, so we all know that anti-VGF uh, treatment has revolutionized treatment of many conditions, but this is the single most burden on today's retina practice. In 2016, approximately 8 million injections were given with about 10 to 20 percent projected growth every year. Indian scenario is not much different. There are about 69 million diabetics, and if you take 5 percent, which is at the low end of DME estimation, 3.5 million uh, uh, patients will need injections. Assuming there are 20,000 AIS members and each one of them gives injections, each one of will have 350 patients. Most of them will need injections every four to six weeks, and we can have the same calculations for AMD. So these are the guidelines, which are the latest guidelines from um, um, ASRS. And 2014 guidelines, we probably know all of them, and VRSI has similar guidelines. So the, the purpose of this talk is to, to, to discuss strategies to enhance patient safety. And we'll go, go through all these um, um, uh, topics one by one. So the first is timeout. So this is my daily schedule. Out of 60 patients, I have about 40 injections a day. So to err is human, and especially if you have that much volume, it's very easy to make a mistake. And we give injections in the office. So timeout. This came from Joint Commission. So the, the slogan is correct patient, correct site, and correct procedure every time. It doesn't take much time, as you can see here, as I'm washing my hands. So my assistant has already seen the patient's chart on the computer. So we know it is the left eye, but always pause for a second and make sure that you're working on the wrong, on, on the correct eye. So masks. So we, we know about this contamination by oral fluoride is a problem. So ASRS guidelines say that you should minimize talking or wear masks. But minimize talking is not possible because we have to give patient directions, time out and everything. So we, we wear masks. No mask for the patient because if the patient has mask and the patient talks, the air will flow towards the eye. Hand hygiene, so hand washing uh, or, uh, and or alcohol-based gel. Gloves are optional. Although the, the, the drug label recommends gloves, but there is very low risk of an infection without gloves and drapes, so we don't use them. Uh, uh, ASRS uh, survey showed uh, about half of them uh, don't wear gloves, and those who do wear gloves, they don't wear sterile gloves. But of course, you want to use no-touch technique and aseptic precautions. Iodine, so we don't use uh, uh, pre-op and post-op antibiotics anymore. A flush is better, but if you are using uh, betadine alone, you want to use 5%, and you want to wait at least 30 seconds. Solid blade speculum, very important. Although the guidelines say you can use manual retraction, but using a speculum frees up one hand. Now, this is the uh, last part of my talk. How do you measure 3.5 to 4 millimeters in an office setting? So you can use uh, a 30 gauge needle, uh, and that's about, the hub is about four millimeters. You can use diameter of a sterile Q-tip, which is about three millimeters. You can use calipers, but then that creates a problem. You have to, uh, to, to keep a large stock and cleaning issues. And there are injection, in, injection kits, but there is something which is free, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. So this is the, the trocar that we use for, for uh, vitrectomy. Just break off the, the sharp end, and the back end of it works very well. You can autoclave it in the same pouch as speculum, and you can see it being used as a simple marking device. And so this will also be used to stabilize the globe, to displace the conjunctiva so that the, the entry site in the conj and, uh, uh, and, and the eye is at a different level. And this will also be used to prevent reflux of the drug, which is uh, uh, very important. So um, 
if you are using subcontinental anesthesia, which most of my patients actually demand, so you want to give injection several millimeters away because tenons and the conges are fused near the limbus. So you want to give it far away and wait about five minutes, and I can guarantee you patient will not feel anything. So this is uh, one of my typical injections, and you can see it. So um, timeout has been done. Uh, you have solid blade speculum, no drapes. Beta dyne drop has gone in. So you use this to pull the conjunctiva first, and then here goes the needle. And I'm showing this for a reason because some patient will still flinch, so that's why you stabilize it. And then you, you do it in a two-plane uh, entry, oblique first, then change your orientation. And as you're coming out, push the conch back. And after that, as you're coming out, assistant will put one more drop of beta dyne in, and you just hold the pressure for a few seconds to prevent reflux. And this is... Uh, uh, Another case, this is with Augedex. So same thing, uh, use it to, to mark it. And uh, pull, the, pull the conch a little bit. And this is uh, Augedex. It's even more important to have oblique entry with Augedex. Go in, click, and then push the conch back and hold the pressure for a few seconds. So results. I started using this uh, uh, about a year ago. So in the, in the last year, I have given 4,000 in injections with no complications, and there has been no damage to, to my little zero uh, rupee marker after hundreds of autoclave cycles. So, so last but not least, about 90% of us have back and neck issues. So watch your posture, watch your back. So you can use indirect. You have this heavy thing on your head, and you are bending forward, or you can have a loop. Or better still, you have uh, uh, designs for vision loops where you have uh, working distance of about 17 inches for me, and maybe uh, it can be individualized so that you have as much erect posture as possible. So please watch your back because nobody else will. And with this, I conclude. So thank you for your uh, attention, and I'll be happy to take, take the questions.